Um, as many of you know, the Journalism Hall of Fame is the oldest of the three. It was begun in 1981, and it is a much coveted award. And tonight, we're going to induct a group that proves, I think, both of the diversity and the power of what it means to be a journalist. For our first up, will Cheryl Carpenter join us for the first of our journalism presentations. Cheryl, where are you? There you are. I am pleased to say that Cheryl is one of our success stories. There is a theme here. She's an alum of the school, and she's managing editor of the Charlotte Observer with a string of editing successes, a Neiman Fellowship in her portfolio, and a convention coverage last summer that went off like that. It was perfect, and it was all on your back. So Cheryl, come do the honors. Thank you. And good evening. I'm here to, to talk about Doug Smith, who was a mentor to me. Um, of all the columns that Doug wrote for The Observer in his 20-year career as a business columnist, there was only one line and one story, Doug, that made me go, really? Um, he wrote that he was going, getting a paycheck for something he would do for free. Still mulling that one, Doug. I'm, I'm, I see you've raised four kids on a journalist out. <laughs> well, for, his four children were raised on a journalist salary. That's Jody, Holly, Robbie, and Carrie. In his career, Doug was both a writer and an editor at the, at the, in Raleigh, in Wichita, and in Charlotte. He covered everything from drug bust to wheat harvest to garbage strikes. His fame in my opinion, however, is tied to his role as a business columnist at the Charlotte Observer. In his 20-some years in that job, he had the best seat in the house for reporting the extraordinary era of growth that Charlotte experienced. He wrote about skyscrapers and galloping suburbs and the transformation overnight of the Charlotte City Center. He grew up in Charlotte, and that gave him an historic understanding of the implications of all the development around us. Readers could see that he cared about our city. He could tell you how a road widening project was going to change neighborhood, and he could tell you how a shopping center was going to give rise to one. He earned a commercial real estate license while he was a journalist, so he could better understand all the rules that he was going to encounter when reporting this story. He built incredible sources for us, and that was tough because the developers and the influential in Charlotte weren't necessarily willing to share their scoops so easily. I think Doug's calm demeanor and easy smile helped that. Doug wanted to know why red dirt was moving in Charlotte. If he saw a lot being cleared or a surveyor paused at an intersection, he would turn his car around and he would, wanted to talk to the guys on the lot and the guys who owned the lot. His column, The Next Big Thing, was one of the Observer's best brands ever. I wish I had a new subscription for every time I heard someone say, I read Doug Smith's column first every day. He was a pro with endurance and reinvention. Remember, Doug went from typewriters to blogging tools. But we all knew that his first devotion is to his family, children and grandchildren, and to his wife, Linda. He occasionally wrote about home life and memories of his m mother and father rearing him in the old Wilmore neighborhood of Charlotte that endeared him all the more to our readers and occasionally making his children blush. His column about his potbelly pig hubba is still one of the faves in the Observer's Library. Doug, thank you again for all those long days and for all the calls that we made to you and Linda at home late at night, and thanks for all the advice you gave me personally. Your values live on in our newsroom, and that's a very good thing. Congratulations. Well, you know something? I really wanted to be an astronaut or a test pilot. <laughs> but after I enrolled in ROTC, Air Force ROTC at Carolina, <clears throat> I managed to get sick in three different types of aircraft. <laughs> Helicopter, cargo plane, and a jet trainer. On top of that, 
I found out I had faulty eyesight and an irregular heartbeat. So, goodbye Air Force, hello journalism. <laughs> Not quite as restrictive on qualifications, I don't think. But I knew when I landed my first job in 1965 at the Raleigh Times that I, I'd found the right career. Uh, I started out as a part-time reporter at $2 a week. And I needed the money, but I probably would have given it up, as, as Cheryl said, because it was such a great experience meeting people and writing stories. And also, as a senior at Chapel Hill, you could, you could walk over to the campus at one of the girls' schools in Raleigh and say, hey, you want to meet Sonny and Cher? I'm interviewing them tonight. And so that career worked for me. Uh, two years later, I reconnected with my hometown and got back to Charlotte. I wanted to be a part of the action, gain the trust of readers, and touch the lives of people through the newspaper. I know it's ambitious and optimistic, but that's, that's what I really wanted to do. I always wanted to go back to my hometown. I never really cared much about leaving it. Uh, <clears throat> to me, it never got old. Chasing the big story gave me the same adrenaline rush in the last year as it did in the first year. Uh, I'm just grateful that the Observer kept me around and supported my habit for four decades. And I'm delightfully surprised and appreciative of the Hall of Fame for recognizing me. But I have to say, this is not something you do by yourself. My wife, Linda, my children, my friends, and my co-workers have always had my back, and I'm grateful to them for doing that. Thank you.